Great. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get started. My name is Megan Bizzini. I'm the Director of Accounts and Business Development here at Boosty. Uh, thank you all so much for attending the Mobilize Your uh, Public Library uh, webinar today. Um, we're going to discuss through the mobile technology landscape out there um, how, how you, how your library can reach patrons on the mobile devices they're using more and more today. I'm going to show you a demo of uh, one of our apps, and I will, of course, leave some time for Q&A. If you have, have any questions throughout the course of this presentation, please do just feel free to chat them in um, into the chat box here on your GoToWebinar control panel, and I'll be happy to answer your questions throughout the course of the presentation. Again, thank you so much for joining me. So today we're seeing that it's really a mobile world out there. Um, almost 100% of college students are using cell phones and tablets. And the average age, age for owning a cell phone is 13. Um, so, and we're seeing that number uh, get, the average age for owning a cell phone get lower and lower each year. Um, two thirds of adults sleep with their cell phones next to their bed. Um, you know, I personally use my cell phone as an alarm clock. I mean, it is something I, I live by as far as my calendar goes. And um, it's, it's like that for most people out there these days. And what apps are doing is they're providing access to information in a way that users are accustomed to, and we're seeing the uh, popularity of apps increasing from year to year. So for example, in 2012, there were 48 billion apps downloaded off of the app stores. And now you're thinking, wow, that number sounds large. Well, in 2013, that number went up to 102 billion apps that were downloaded. So we see uh, just from 2012 to 2013, that number is you know, more than doubled. Um, and so that's just really reflecting um, the popularity of apps, the fact that native apps are here to stay, and that users, mobile device users, are more accustomed to accessing information in this way. Um, a great way to think about this is when you're on your mobile device, are you going to go to, you know, your web browser and type in www.facebook.com or www.twitter.com, or are you just simply going to tap on an app that you have preloaded on your mobile device? Um, and of course, it's that ease of access component and the ability to just have, you know, one tap access to all the resources that you want. Um, and again, we're seeing that almost 90% of mobile device users' time is spent in apps. And so the reality is users really are not um, opening web browsers on their, on their mobile devices. So if your library does have, let's say, a responsive website, I think that's a great component, and many of our customers do have both, you know, a native app and a mobile responsive website so they can capture all users. Um, but on mobile devices, users really are only uh, spending most of their time, um, you know, like up to about 90% of their time in apps. And the question is, how is your library reaching um, these mobile device users? And so what does going mobile mean? Um, so to us here at Boopsy, it means self-directed library use and 24-7, 365 access to your library's resources and your library services. Um, it's really going to, of course, increase patron engagement. And by virtue of increasing patron en engagement, of course, you're going to increase circulation. You're also increasing circulation because you're highlighting um, patron-preferred content, such as e-books, audiobooks, um, things like that. And it allows you to really serve a diverse community as well, um, being that you know, our apps do have multilingual func functionality available. It's really, you are providing your patrons with an access point that is allowing access to information in a way that they are accustomed to. And not only that they're accustomed to, it's a way that patrons expect access to information these days. And so, you know, how are patrons, and I challenge all of our library um, customers or, you know, people considering going mobile, is how are you reaching your patrons on their mobile devices? Um, because we're seeing that the numbers, you know, if you have a responsive solution or no solution at all, um, you know, you're leaving out a huge number of patrons, including your infrequent um, library users. And really, you're also seeing a better return on investment for all of your digital subscriptions. Um, so again, you're paying a ton of money for all of these great resources like OverDrive, OneClick Digital, um, just to name a couple. And the question is, how are you realizing a return on investment for these subscriptions and how are you increasing usage and making them visible to your patrons and a mobile app is a great way to highlight all of this um, great information that you're subscribing to. 
And again, um, as, I, as I had just mentioned, um, mobile, going mobile really does help you reach the infrequent patron. Um, so the infrequent library users are bigger fans of ebooks than any other group, and time and efficiency are key factors. Um, so when you're looking at your total population served for your library, you know, let's say you have X number of card holders, and, and that's, that might be a really good ratio. You might have a lot of card holders um, relative to your population served. But the question is, how many of those card holders are infrequent users? And what are your outreach services like for reaching those infrequent users? And the majority of card holders are infrequent users in, in a lot of ways. And so it's really about bringing the library to the user, allowing them access to the breadth of your library's great resources at the tap of a button. And of course, it's increasing um, the amount of engagement that you have with these infrequent um, library visitors. And also, when you're talking about aggregating all of your resources into a single app environment, you know, we're finding that about 65% of Bootsy library app usage is for non-catalog data and services. So what does that mean? It's things like ebooks and audiobooks, access to third-party databases, book scans, ask a librarian, your library events, your calendar of events, um, your payment platform, so patrons that can log into their account and see you know, if they have any fines or fees, or they can um, renew items or place pulls on uh, books, for example. Um, so really we're seeing that users are not only excited about searching your catalog, but they're also excited about all of the other services that you're able to offer them. And you might be convinced about going mobile. You might say, okay, Megan, I understand the mobile technology landscape. I understand we need to be there and reach our patrons on their mobile devices they spend a ton of time on. The question is, why should we partner with Bootsy? And a valid question. And I think it does come down to the four NAs. You know, it's any phone, any tablet, any network, and I always add one more any, which is anywhere. Um, so we're reaching patrons, no matter what type of device that they're using, and we're not leaving any of your patrons out. And that's including, you know, Apple devices, Android devices, Windows devices. And so, you know, we're not, telling you, okay, we only support one platform, and then you're leaving a lot of uh, patrons out. It allows your patrons the flexibility to choose their mobile device, whatever mobile device they may have, and then load your app on that device, and the app is optimized for their particular device. And we do have, of course, a powerful search designed for mobile. Um, so we have a proprietary search called Smart Prefix Search, which allows users to type in less to get to where they need to go. Um, so for example, if you were searching Mark Twain, you would just type in M-A space T-W. And we're seeing that users are performing more searches um, by using our proprietary search. And really, it's much more than just catalog searching. It's access to patron preferred content, like ebooks and audiobooks, as I previously mentioned. It's an easy, fast, and affordable implementation, and of course, promotes library branding in the community, as all of the Boopsy apps are completely library branded. And because the reality is we know that your end users, your patrons, do not care about the fact that Boopsy is supporting your mobile app. And what they do care about is their library and finding their library on all of the app stores. And, um, you know, we, we're kind of your outsourced IT for your mobile app or, you know, making same day changes for you and helping you on your end. And your patrons are getting this, you know, access to all of your great and rich content with a completely library branded app, which is a direct reflection of your library. It really does give your patrons access to what they need and fast and allows you to retain relevance in this digital media world. Um, so what you're acknowledging um, amongst your patrons is that this is a digital media world. We understand that you're using your mobile devices more and more, and we're, we're actually, we actually have a solution uh, for reaching you on your mobile devices and bringing our library to you. And that simple acknowledgement is not only increasing you know, uh, engagement with infrequent users, but it's also helping you acquire new patrons. And again, if you have any questions, just feel free to chat them into the box. Happy to answer them throughout the course of the presentation. This is just a visual uh, about our multi-device multi support. So from Android to Google Play, um, Windows 8, and Apple devices, you know, we're supporting all the different, any, you know, any device that your patron may be using. A little bit more about us here at Boopsy. We were founded in 2006 and our headquarters, headquarters are here in Silicon Valley, so hello from California. And um, we are the industry leader in providing mobile apps for libraries and we're in over 2,500 library locations worldwide. And one of the key differentiators in making us 
the industry leader is the types of partnerships that we're forging with both content providers and publishers alike. So we're forming uh, these partnerships with companies like, you know, Recorded Books, our Overdrive, and we're making sure that our system is communicating seamlessly with their system so we can provide this very user-rich experience. Our platform supports, of course, multiple languages. Uh, we're the mobile app platform that scales across multiple systems. And just to show you how scalable, scalable our system is, our platform is, we're the solution for individual libraries, library consortiums, and co-ops, and even statewide systems alike. Um, and some of our star partners I've mentioned, and I'll go over a list moving forward, we also are the mobile conference app provider for conferences like PLA, CLA, um, OLA, just to name a few. Um, so we're the trusted vendor in providing um, apps for those conferences. Again, just another visual um, on our completely library branded apps. I will also add in addition to this, you know, take a look at the look and feel, the colors, the channel names, um, the logos, all again, a direct reflection of each of these libraries. We also have the bottom navigation bar, which is kind of the static bar. No matter where you are in the app, the user can go um, home to their account or run a search against your catalog. Um, so this it's another just ease of access component and um, you know making it easier for patrons to navigate around your app, and which is of course going to decrease abandonment of of that um, line of research or of that checkout, which will have a direct effect on circulation, of course. And another visual on what a native app looks like versus a mobile responsive site versus a web browser. I'm um, just a regular website. I apologize. So the two on the left hand side are both solutions where the mobile device user would need to open a web browser such as Safari or Firefox um, Internet Explorer. So the user would then need to or Google Chrome, for example. The user would then need to, you know, open their web browser and then they'd need to, you know, search for your library's website or maybe they have it bookmarked. They'd open the, the website. On the left side, you see it's very difficult for the patron to see where they need to go. And they would need to kind of zoom in and zoom out or, you know, the reality is the patron's going to see this. It looks like a cluster. They're going to shut it down and say, no way, this isn't worth my time. Um, in the middle solution, we have a mobile response site, which is definitely a step in the right direction. But again, you're seeing it, the information is not presented in a way that's mobile device user friendly. Um, it still requires a lot of, uh, you know, tapping around to figure out where you need to go. And um, there's not very clearly named channels. And again, it's this fundamental aspect that the user would need to access this on a web browser. And the reality is, again, um, almost 90% of mobile device users' time is spent in apps, which is the far right solution. Um, so on the, the, far, the left two, even if they were to open a mobile browser, the likelihood of them, them even opening a web browser is so unlikely. Um, and so you see the native app solution on the right side. It has all of the channel names. It's very easy to see where you need to go. Um, there's your account. There is, you know, e-books, access. You know, it's very easy, easy to get around within this environment. Again, what it's going to do is you're going to increase patient engagement. So engagement, um, you know, increases with the less amount of time it takes to get a user to where they need to go. So the less amount of taps, the faster the searches, for example, are two key factors in efficiency. Uh, so some of our features uh, include, you know, our catalog search, library locator, ILS integration, of course, which is directly related to your catalog search, your calendar of events, your Ask a Librarian feature, all of your great social media from Instagram to Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, whatever you have, you name it, and we can go ahead and incorporate and incorporate it within your app. Um, another really awesome feature that we have is called Book Look, which allows users to scan the ISBN barcode of a book from anywhere in the world and check it against the library's holding. Um, it will check it against the holding, library's holdings in real time if your library does have that particular book. It would then allow the user to place a hold on that book. Um, and if uh, your library didn't, we could include a button that would allow patrons to request that your library purchase this book. Um, so really cool feature, really great for collection development and resource allocation, and just a really interactive tool for your patrons. Again, access to ebooks such as Overdrive, we have a fully embedded reader for Overdrive, um, book check, and of course multilingual support. Some of our star partners that I mentioned already, um, in addition to the ones I've mentioned, we have Access360, Credo Liter Literati, um, EBSCO, Gale Cengage, Mango Languages, 
tutor.com, just to name a few. Another um, subscription service that we're offering that I wanted to mention is our digital comics and graphic novel subscription. It allows users to, we have a fully embedded reader for our app. You can also put this content subscription up on your website as you would any other, um, any other content that you're subscribing to. Um, patrons can access titles on their PC, tablet, or smartphone, and it's integrated, again, directly with your library app, fully embedded reader, and also on your website. Another subscription service that we're offering, which is a, just a channel in the app, is called Cover Cake. It's an exclusive service designed for library apps. Um, it's kind of books you've seen and heard on TV and the radio. Um, so it's going to lift out books of guests on shows like The Colbert Report and radio shows like NPR. So this is a really great way to engage and excite your patrons. And again, they would check that against the library holdings in real time to be able to place a hold on that book or request that your library purchase that book. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up a product demo really quickly. As I'm pulling that up, please feel free to um, chat in any questions. Um, and I'm happy to answer them as I'm pulling up the demo. It'll just take me a moment here to pull it up. Just give me one moment here. I'm going to show you um, one of my favorite apps here, the St. Louis County Library. Um, it's a really exciting app. And I'm looking at it, and I'm realizing I'm not actually mirroring it, so you all can see just how exciting it is. Just give me one second here. Great, so here we have the St. Louis County Library app. As you can see, um, I'm using an iPad mini right now to mirror, and we do, again, optimize um, our apps for all devices. So the difference between you know a tablet and a smartphone, like a, an iPhone versus an iPad mini versus a full-fledged iPad um, versus an Android tablet or smartphone, we are optimizing um, our apps for each of the different devices and making changes accordingly. So as you go into your app, uh, your account here, you can check out you know, your holds, any um, signs that you may have. You can renew items. Um, so here you can see that reflected in the app here. Of course, you can search a library catalog. So again, using our proprietary search, our smart prefix search, you can type in MATW is going to then run the search for Mark Twain. Here you can go. You go ahead and click on the results. Um, and then you can see this particular source is an online resource. But if it's a book, you go ahead and place a hold on that book. And then go ahead and pick it up from the library if your library does hold. Um, we have our download eMedia. So here they have a fully um, embedded, like I said, overdrive reader. And you can see that St. Louis County as a lot of our library customers do, um, they will kind of name the channels based on generic names like ebooks or e audiobooks. Um, but some of our customers do use the actual resource name like Overdrive, for example. Um, and that's something we're very flexible with. So here you can see you can go ahead and search um, all of the holdings within the Overdrive uh, subscription. And you would just go ahead and, you know, click on the particular uh, book that you're looking to check out. And then you would check it out immediately. And it would be a fully embedded. Um, experience. So the user would be reading fully within the app environment and they would be able to go home, back to their account, uh, renew items all within the app. Again, some other cool uh, features that they have are Hoopla, Tumblebug, Zinio, as uh, name a few. I'm also going to demo our book look feature again, which allows users to scan the ISBN barcode and check it against the, the holdings of the library in real time. So just give me a moment here. There we are. I'm using a book called Prey. Just need some time to focus. So it's having a little bit of trouble focusing. Um, just give me one second. Should scan. Perfect. There we are. So as you can see, um, there are a couple of, you know, there's two matching titles available, and you would then just like you would with a catalog holdings, you'd be able to place a hold on this book from within the app. Um, so really great, cool feature, very interactive, and patrons really love our book look feature. Again, we have, you know, ask the librarian, call our email. If you have a chat service, we can definitely integrate that as well within the app. We have our calendar of events. Um, here, St. Louis County Library is actually using Evance, so the calendaring system is pretty um, advanced, they have some really nice categories, and since we track um, some channel usage, you would be able to see which events are kind of most popular. And here, you know, events to the audience, for example, children and families, 
um, here you have a full listing. We also parse them out by branch. So if you have multiple branches, we can definitely include on those different calendars as well. Here we have different locations and hours. Um, so here it would have, you know, it does have a geolocation feature, so it will show patrons which branch is closest to where they're at. It's a very cool feature. It then shows, you know, information about the particular branch, such as another phone number, their location, and hours. I'm going to go ahead and go back to the main menu. Um, some other unique features about this app is they have author events, um, small business lecture series, and then here we have all the social media, so connect, um, such as you know, Facebook, Twitter, Flickr, go ahead and click on one of those. You can check out, they have a Twitter, um, they have an RSS feed in there, and then they also have, for example, Facebook. So really great features. There we are, there's the Facebook. And then the users, again, can still go back within the app environment. Um, so please do feel free to chat, chat in any questions. And I'm gonna go ahead and jump right back into the presentation. Great. I just have a few more slides here, and then again, I will leave some time for Q&A. Just another example of one of our apps. It's a, much, it's a very colorful app, and just I just wanted to give you a point of reference to see how customized our apps are. We really are, you know, they are completely library branded and a direct reflection of your library. Um, what I invite you all to do is to take a test drive and explore the possibilities and check our library apps out for yourself. So if you go to our website, doopsy.com, you can click on find a library and type in your city or zip code to locate a library near you. Um, definitely download that mobile, you know, that app onto your actual mobile device to really get a feel for, um, you know, the user experience on the app. And we, have, we definitely have a lot of blogs up on our website. Um, I'm happy to link up some more demos that may be of particular interest to your library as well. A little bit about our deployment process. Um, once you finalize the contract with us, we go ahead and start building and customizing and testing your app right away. Um, on average, it takes about six weeks for our apps to go live. Um, and, you know, we go through the process, you know, a few rounds of revision. We make sure the app is exactly how you want it to look, which is why it takes about, you know, on average about six weeks. And we estimate it only takes about one day of staff time to get us the information that we need to build your app. Um, so really minimal burden on your staff. Um, does not require, is no burden on your IT staff at all, and it requires no hosting or maintenance. And um, we provide complete wraparound technical support for our app, in addition to providing customer training webinars and uh, marketing materials up on our website. So here are some of our marketing materials. Um, we provide, you know, text for newsletters, email campaigns, um, banners, you know, things that you can engage your patrons with and put them up on your website. So we provide all of these materials um, at no additional cost to our libraries, our customers. So that's kind of the end of my presentation today. Um, you know, I invite you all to kind of mobilize your library today, and um, you can kind of start that process by reaching out to me. Um, again, my name is Megan Vizzini. I'm the Director of Accounts and Business Development here at Boopsy. My email address is simply my first name, M-E-G-A-N, at boopsy.com. Here's my cell phone number, and I'm also pretty active on Twitter. So please do follow me on Twitter as well. I'd love to. Uh, follow you back as well. <laughs> um, so if there are any questions, please chat them in. I'm going to stay on the line for a couple of minutes here um, before I log out to answer any questions. Great. So it looks like we do have a question about pricing. This is a really great question. So pricing uh, for our public libraries is based on population serve, kind of the breadth of your resource portfolio, and the features and functionalities that you're looking for. So if you send me an email even right after this presentation, um, I'd be happy to provide you with some kind of ballpark pricing. I may need to set up a meeting, uh, just a brief uh, phone meeting to learn a little bit more about your library, and then happy to send out pricing. I'm very transparent with that. Great. Are there any other questions today? Again, just feel free to chat them in here into the chat box. Great, we do have a question about our digital comics and graphic novels uh, and pricing on that. So again, if you are interested in that, I'm happy to send you more information. Um, whether you're the point of contact or you have you know, particular individual and collection development, um, I'm happy to you know, send more information your way about that particular subscription. It's very exciting. Like I said, patrons love it. 
So we have a question about this presentation, if it's being recorded. Um, I'm absolutely recording this presentation, so I'm happy to send you all the link um, to the recorded version of this session so that you can share it with other members of your team as well. Great. Any other questions today? Perfect. Well, thank you all so much for joining me. You've all been really great, um, been very engaged. I've loved, you know, kind of feeling your questions, and I look forward to helping your library go mobile. So please reach out to me just as soon as possible. Again, happy to provide pricing and answer any other questions that you or other members of your team may have. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I look forward to staying in contact. Thanks.